What is going on YouTube? I wanted to make a video to explain the structure of my cutting diet and my plan going forward the next 14 weeks. All starts off with my diet, okay? So I wanna talk about how tracking my macros and if it fits your macros, flexible dieting has impacted me and how it could possibly impact you guys. And if you'd like to start, I'll show you the basics on how I track and what I do to track all the food that I eat. All right, so let's get into it. Macronutrients. What are they? The macros are one gram of protein, carbohydrate, or fat. One of the biggest things that impacted me when I first started tracking was that one gram of fat is the same no matter what kind of food you are eating it from. So one gram of fat in a burger is the same as one gram of fat in ice cream. That goes with carbohydrates and protein too. One gram of carb or one gram of protein is the same in whey protein as it is in almonds. That's a weird example, but just trying to get the main point across that. A gram of fat, carb, or protein is the same no matter what kind of food you eat it from. I wanted to talk about these macros because that is kind of the basis on my whole diet. So I'm not necessarily eating the same exact foods every single day. It's usually dependent on what I have going on for that day. If I have to work, if I have to go to school, if doing stuff with the family, we're going over family member's house, then obviously my diet's gonna be a little bit different. I have been doing the If It Fits Your Macros Flexible Dieting for the past, started tracking about two years ago. It has literally been the single most effective thing for me, at least for dieting and helping me have a good, a healthy relationship with food. I know that sounds kind of weird having relationship with food, but trust me, at least for me, when I wasn't aware of how to count macros and flexible dieting and IIFYM, I would always think if I eat this type of food, if I eat ice cream at, at night or past a certain time, then it would immediately become fat on my body. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Your bodies are just this continuous spectrum of your metabolism breaks down food, digest everything that you eat. It doesn't matter what time you eat foods. It doesn't matter what kinds of foods you eat to a certain point. The biggest impact on you is going to be your total calories at the end of the day. Below that total calories is gonna be your macro goals. So kind of just wanted to explain how you figure those out and try to make it as simple and easy for you guys as possible. All right, so to figure out your total calories that you're going to be needing for the day, this is gonna be dependent on your goals. So right now for me, I am cutting, so I need to eat below. So this is your maintenance level right here, okay? And this level right here, it's gonna be different for each and every person, okay? Someone's gonna have it's gonna be based on body fat, genetics, how often they work out each week, their activity level. But to calculate this maintenance level right here, you're going to need to find what your basal metabolic rate is, your BMR. That is the number of calories you could eat every single day if all you did was just lay in bed. You didn't move around, you didn't do anything. All you did was sleep the entire day. Let's just say you did that. This is how much your metabolism is going to break down and use for energy to sustain your body. For me, it's a rate around 2,000. I could eat 2,000 calories every single day if I didn't move around or do anything. It would stay the exact same weight. Now, if I add in some activity level, I'm going to need to eat more calories to maintain my weight, okay? How do you figure out what your BMR is? So what you're gonna need is you're going to need to find what your body fat percentage is. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but probably the most convenient and inexpensive way meaning free, is to use the US Navy method of body fat estimation. This is probably one of the most accurate ways to estimate your body fat percentage behind doing an actual autopsy by professionals that do that kind of stuff because they can find exactly how much weight your organs are and everything like that. But that's besides the point. DEXA scan is gonna be more accurate than this also, but that is expensive and that is also inconvenient. So this is going to be the best option to estimate what your body fat is. You're going to need three things. You need your height in inches or centimeters, whichever one works for you. Your neck circumference at the narrowest point and your shoulders down and relaxed. I usually like to just look in a mirror and just estimate where it is on the measuring tape. Yeah. The last thing you need is going to be your waist circumference. For this, you want to measure at your belly button with the tape measure. The easiest way to do this is just make sure your stomach is relaxed. Try and be as accurate as possible. After that, you'll have your height, your neck, and your waist measurements. And you just enter it into this formula that I will put on the screen right here. And it will give you a body fat percentage. So I'll put in my numbers that I currently am. I'll put them in the formula and I'll show it right about now. Right there? Yeah. And so yeah, so body fat is that. After that, you're just gonna need to find your weight. 
What I like to recommend for that is just weigh yourself in the morning after you go to the bathroom. That is gonna be the most accurate reading. Now you have your body fat and you have your weight. Now you just need to calculate your lean body mass. This is gonna tell you how much muscle mass is on your body. You just enter that into this formula right here. You enter in your weight and your body fat percentage into this formula. I'll show an example of me personally doing this with my numbers in this example right here. And it brings out that number for lean body mass. So what this means, we're gonna use this to calculate our protein and our fat for every single day. We're also gonna use this number, our lean body mass to calculate our BMR, our basal metabolic rate like we talked about before. We'll enter that number into this formula right there. It'll give us a caloric number that if we ate that every single day, we wouldn't gain or lose any weight at all if all we did was just lay in bed. So obviously, we're not just gonna lay in bed, we're gonna be moving around, we're gonna be working out, we're gonna be doing whatever we need to do every single day. The next step is we need to multiply this number right here by an activity multiplier, okay? Now this is gonna be different because everyone has different activity levels, they're gonna be doing different things. I will put the multipliers in this corner right here, somewhere right there, and you're gonna to wanna to multiply this number right there, your BMR, by that number, whatever correlates to your activity level over there. My activity level is right around probably the very active level, so the 1.725 area. So I'll multiply 1.725, my activity level, by my BMR. Put that right here, an example. And now this gives us the maintenance calories, okay? You could eat this number in calories every single day, accounting for our activity that we are doing every single day, every single week. You will not gain or lose any weight. Okay. For most people, they either want to cut or bulk. What that means is eating above, above this is your bulking. Below this is you want to cut weight. If you want to gain muscle, the easiest way to do this is to eat in a caloric surplus up here, AKA bulking. That is the easiest way to gain muscle because you're giving your muscles enough energy to build, put brand new muscle onto your body is not an easy thing to do. You need to give it as much energy as possible to do that. So eating at your maintenance level isn't the best option unless you are a beginner lifter, okay? It's someone who is brand new to training, brand new to lifting weights because their body isn't accustomed to the exercise that's being put through. The lifter who has been training for about a year, their bodies can actually gain muscle and lose fat at the same time because it is a new type of stimulant. They actually can do this, but as we get years and years into lifting and into training, our bodies get used to the type of stimulant that we are putting it through. Okay, and the less and less likely and possible it is for you to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. If you are a part of that crowd that is over one year lifting, then usually you're going to have to set relative goals of gaining muscle or losing weight. For me, I just came off about nine months of bulking where I ate above my maintenance level up here in a caloric surplus. I did that to help build muscle because it's not as possible for me to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. I wanna be able to build as much muscle as I can, so that's why I wanted to eat above my maintenance level so it would be easier for me to put on muscle. So now that we've kind of discussed that, I want to explain why I chose my calories from cutting. Here's your maintenance level right here, okay? If you wanna lose weight, you gotta eat below it in a caloric deficit, okay? You're gonna have to figure out a target weight loss that you wanna lose per week, and that's how you can calculate how many calories to cut from this maintenance level, okay? So for me, for my first month of my cut, I want to lose about one pound every single week, okay? Key statistic to realize with this is that one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories, about 3,500 calories, okay? So, I wanna lose about one pound per week. If one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories and I have seven days to do this in one week, all I have to do is take 3,500 calories divided by seven and that equals 500 calories. So I'll chop 500 calories off of this maintenance level and I'll eat about right around here for calorie wise and do this for every single day, the seven days of the week and the 500 times seven, you'll get 3,500 calorie deficit at the end of the week. That thus equals one pound. So there you go. I think that's a big thing to realize is finding your maintenance level of calories because the number of calories you eat every single day is gonna be the biggest impact on your physique, on your training, on pretty much everything that deals with fitness. And that's why I'd like to suggest, recommend tracking 
your food, you don't have to track, you don't have to try and hit certain macros if that's too kind of in depth for you, which I haven't gone over yet, but I will in a little bit. Kind of just getting an idea of what you're eating every single day and how many calories you may be eating. Okay, so now that we've calculated what our maintenance level is and how we determine how much calories to cut from this if we want to lose weight, we're going to calculate our macronutrients. We'll start with proteins. Macros, remember, are grams of protein, carbs, and fat. Okay, so very first thing we're going to start with is our protein. Because we are cutting, we are going to be losing weights. We want to hold on to as much muscle as possible. Protein will help us do that. A good range for protein when you're cutting is about 1.1 to 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass. Okay, remember we calculated our lean body mass earlier by using our body fat percentage and multiplying that by our weight to find that. We're gonna pick for grams, it's personal preference. If you don't really like protein that much, you can stick at the lower range. If you really like protein, you can keep it at the higher range. But anything above that isn't really gonna affect you too much. It's probably just gonna be expensive. I chose to do 1.4 because I like protein. It is the most satiating, satiating macronutrient. So that means it keeps you full longer and you're not constantly hungry and it suppresses your appetite the most out of all the macronutrients. I'm going to use 1.4 times my pounds of lean body mass. I'll show an example right here. You guys can also do the same thing if you'd like. And we come out to this number right here. Okay. So that's going to be the protein we're going to shoot for every single day. Okay. We've got our maintenance right here. We're shooting for this cutting calorie, this cutting caloric level right here. Okay. And of this caloric level, we're going to eat this much grams of protein. And another key thing to remember is that there are four calories per gram of protein and carbohydrate, and there are nine calories per gram of fats. That's going to be big in calculating our carbohydrates at the end. Number two, the second macronutrient that we're going to calculate is our fats. A good range for this is going to be 0.4 to 0.6 grams per pound of your lean body mass. Okay. So for these, I just decided to use 0.4. It's not really a big difference. Personal preference, again, whatever you'd like to choose. I'm going to multiply 0.4 grams times my lean body mass right down here. And we're going to calculate this number right here, right there. This is going to be the number of grams of fat we're going to eat every single day. Lastly, we're going to calculate our carbs. There isn't a range for carbs because we've already calculated our proteins. We've calculated our fats. All we need to do is take the rest of our calories and use them as our carbohydrates. So remember we said there were four calories per gram of protein. So we're gonna multiply four calories times our proteins right there, get this number. And then we also said that there were nine calories per gram of fat. We're gonna calculate our fat calories right here. So take that, take our grams per fat every day, multiply it by nine calories. And we get this number right here when we take our proteins plus our fats. We take our cutting level right here. We're going to subtract our protein calories right here. Also subtract our fat calories right here. And these are the number of calories left that we can use for our carbohydrates in the day. Okay. So now we said there are four calories per gram of protein. There are also four calories per gram of carbohydrates. So for this, we're just going to take this number right here, our calories for our carbohydrates in the day, and we're going to divide it by four. This is going to give us our carbohydrate grams for the day right there. Boom. Now we have all of our macros. We have our proteins, we have our fats, and we have our carbs. We're going to shoot for these numbers every day. If we don't hit numbers exactly, it's not a big deal. You can go within five grams, 10 grams. It's not a huge deal. The more accurate you are, the more precise you are, the faster you're going to reach your goals. But you also have to balance that with your leisure time and life pretty much balance out with everything like you do with everything else. I wouldn't stress about it if you're one or two grams off, it's not that big of a deal. And if you are, you can just adjust for your other macros as well. So you're one or two grams over protein, then take one or two grams below carbohydrates and vice versa. There we go, we've calculated our macros for our cut. One last thing I like to do with the macro numbers is that if they're weird numbers, and I just like to round. I like to round just to zeros or fives, whichever you'd like. Uh, you don't have to round, but it just makes it easier for me when I'm tracking. I know I need to hit 230 protein, 70 fat, and 350 carbs. Like we talked about earlier, you can adjust however you need to as long as you hit your total calories. It makes it easier to know what you need to hit every single day and help you sustain your diet. So yeah, guys, just wanted to make this video showing how to calculate your macros and your caloric level. 
based on whatever your goals might be, if you want to cut, if you want to maintain, if you want to bulk, whatever you'd like. Tracking macros has had the biggest impact on me for my fitness journey. It's helped me reach my goals. It's really convenient just to know that you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as you hit certain goals by the end of the day. If you haven't tracked macros before, you know, maybe just try it out for a little bit. Kind of get, kind of feel how it works. If you don't like it, then you don't have to do it, obviously. But if it, if it's something that you like, then it definitely will help you reach your goals if you like to start. Tracking macros will also give you an idea of what certain portion sizes of certain foods look like. If you're out at a restaurant and you don't have, obviously you're not gonna have a scale or anything like that, you can say, oh, I know that's about four ounces of chicken. Oh, I know that's about a cup of rice. Oh, that looks like about a cup of milk or something like that. It helps you get an idea of how much of certain foods look like and also kind of get an idea of how many calories are in those foods and also the macros that are in those foods, those foods as well. Super easy, convenient, and reassuring. Help you have a good relationship with food know that certain foods don't make you fat it's kind of just overeating foods and not knowing how much you've eaten in a day so yeah tracking has helped me a lot and hopefully it can help you guys too thank you guys for watching appreciate all the support love you guys and i'll see you in the next one take care